What is up and welcome to Hot Take Where we chill out and listen to some music And then get to see what we think about it And I'm Toby, aka Cushion from the TND channel Make sure you check out everything we do And today we're going to listen to Addicts of My Life by The Grateful Dead And that was on American Beauty 1970 And it's a classic And I'm going to hop over into this wooden dream I love to hop into dreams. Even again, I'm always stopping before the lyrics, but I have to say uh, a lot of times I did this in the on the album versions to where like it almost sounded like it was written at the end of a jam. You know, it's like they were coming off of a really speedy jam and trying to slow it down. And that's just the intro. And it's almost uh, genius because when they played it, they could just uh, just actually use it as the end of the jam and it would sound perfect. It wouldn't sound like you're changing at all. But I just thought that was weird. In the of my life full of cloudy dreams unreal man the way they're breaking it down and stretching all the words out it's like uh it's you know it's kind of like a choir like a really slow choir sound but um it just has this weird haunting element to it and for one the backups and how how it's mixed together like this is some of the best choir sound that they ever got in my opinion it just comes across really uh really weird because it's so slow and it you know it should be a little more peppy peppy Full of the best though just taking a light and putting like uh like an entire octave run in a single word <laughs> when there was no to you say Yeah, I think this song is full of a lot of, uh, like, what we kind of cliches, you know, like poetic cliches, um, and a lot of duality. There's a lot of strange writing. It seems kind of like a, uh, just a straight poem that they took and just put some music behind it and made it fit, kind of forced it to fit, you know? I have spent my life Seeking all that's still unsung. Yeah, so the the mixing in the room too, because you can hear a little bit of the room and the uh, tenderness of the hi hat. It straight up sounds like they're uh, recording in a church. You know, it's got the reverb of it, the way they're singing, and it kind of has even more, even a little like Gregorian chant influence. You know, the way they're stretching it out, like. In quite what you would hear in church, I wouldn't think. Bent my ear to hear the tune and closed my eyes to see. I do love that little change, you're not expecting that. In the book of love's own dream. The 
way they would pull off those weird changes, the steps that you're not expecting, and still pull it off somehow is amazing to me. I don't know. That seems like a nightmare to learn and especially to create. It just seems like you have to have a different mindset for music, you know? Where all the print is blood. Where all the print is blood. That's the most metal deadline ever. Where all the pages are my days. I love that. I've talked about like uh so I kind of think there's three different dead songs as far as like what can fit into my day and there's the like fresh bake in the morning you know it's like birds are chirping you're not quite awake this one's perfect for that like a a nice morning bake in the sun you know and some of them again we've talked about ones that you can't listen to like in the morning on the way to work like the the midnight uh psycho tripping kind of feeling like that it's only for when you need it you're not gonna just sit back and relax to it and then there's the midday during work ones i think that are the more like uh maybe your scarlet begonias maybe uh just something a little more a little more hype big band sound you know and again this one's one of my favorites like uh your eyes are just creeping open and you're stoned as fuck You know, it's funny that this uh, song is called Addicts of My Life because I feel like it'd be cleaning the cobwebs out of my head. <laughs> but no, this uh, I thought this note was weird on You Flew To Me. <clears throat> he was asked uh, what this line meant, and uh, he basically said, uh, I have to give the stock answer um, that it's basically meant to communicate to deeper levels. Poetry isn't for uh, necessarily... Describing the story that the writer, I feel that's what I'm taking from it. It's not necessarily taking uh, the position of you should know why he wrote it. You know, it's more for you to interpret, you know. But then he went on to say, uh, I guess the best he could say that you flew to me is the affirmation of the concept of grace. No, this is not a song about being stoned. It's a song about the soul. So go ahead and throw my answer out the window. That was my, this was what this is, this is to me. And, you know, but you said before that it's supposed to uh, evoke something in you, right? So it's like, uh, I can use it for whatever I want to. I can use it to clean out the cobwebs with some with some THC, you know. But it is very, very cool to hear that he thought the concept of grace is like, I feel like that's a troll. For a poet, you're like, hey, why, what does that line mean? Well, it's just the general concept of grace. Go suck it. That's a mic drop moment for a poet. And I think he kind of trolled whoever was interviewing him there. <laughs> you I feel like a lot of people that uh, don't listen to older music get uh, turned off by the kind of buzzing or like fuzz that's in the mix on a lot of these older songs. And it's kind of, it's honestly, I feel like it's most of that is the room noise of like they have these hot amps in a room with mics that are just picking up, you know, uh, a little bit of that uh, fuzz from the amp. And so you can hear like the room buzzing. And I think that's actually pretty cool because with digital music, you can't feel that. You can actually listen into the room that they're listening to or the room that they're recording in. You can listen to things that they didn't intend you to hear necessarily. And it's that like actual vibration of the room. and Or it's a buzz, you know. 
in the secret space of dreams, where I dream, amazed. I feel like I should have a hymnal out. I think I do. <laughs> Yeah, isn't what is this technically a hymnal? Isn't a hymnal just a collection of songs that um, are used in in some kind of spiritual gathering? Can we be that vague? In in this case, yes. In the addicts of my life you know and i just you know i kind of went through a little bit of something there and that was nice i for one i wanted to say something coming from i don't know if you've watched our podcast and watched what we do but i you know i have an indifferent past with religion and uh i've always loved uh religious music though not church rock not that but like old uh soulful church music you know and i've always felt weird because i can't listen to it because it has an agenda and so i feel like the dead with these songs allows me to embrace like what probably my parents loved about religion and i can listen to it without knowing that it has an agenda to to do something to me right or to try to manipulate me anyway weird side note no one's ever said that about acts in my life probably <laughs> Hot take. That's my hot take for today. Uh, that you know, if you if you have a traumatized past about uh, religion, listen to the dead. <laughs> and uh, fuck yeah. So I want to keep doing these, and you guys should uh, tell me some op, you know, some ideas you have, and uh, let me know in the comments. Leave that like, subscribe to the channel, check out everything we're doing, check out the Patreon, check out Real Bird, check out music. We're doing shit all the time. We love you. And we going out with a hi-yah! Wake up, wake up.